Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. Welcome back to this series about getting started with Dorico SE, Steinberg's entirely free music notation software. In this video, we're going to create our first project together. We'll choose an instrument and start to input some music. Off we go. I've launched Dorico SE, and in the hub, we'll choose Create New, which has several project templates to get us started. Let's choose the Solo Piano template. We can pre-fill some basic information for our new project and add things like time and key signatures if we know already what we would like. In the last video, we looked at the different modes that Dorico is organized into. When you start a new project from a template, it opens directly in write mode, which is where we want to be to start writing music. To input notes with your mouse, simply select notes from the panel and click in the score using the ghost note head as a guide. Dorico has musical intelligence built in, meaning it knows, for example, when a note duration should be written as a single note and when actually it should be written as a tie chain to reinforce the meter. This means you need worry only about inputting the rhythm you want, and Dorico will ensure it is notated correctly and clearly. You don't need to input rests. The orange grid above the staff helps you input notes at any position. Inputting a note over an existing one will overwrite it, unless you enable chords. Press Escape or Return to exit note input. To input music using your computer keyboard, make a selection and click Start Note Input. This orange line that we call the caret indicates when notes and other items will be input by the keyboard. And you can move the caret to any position using the arrow keys, even to different staves. Choose note durations using the number keys along the top of the keyboard. Use six for a quarter note or crotchet, with smaller numbers for shorter durations and larger numbers for longer durations. Then use the letter keys A to G to input that pitch. You can also use the keyboard panel to specify the pitch. Again, there's no need to input rests. Simply move the caret to the desired position either with the arrow keys or by pressing space, which advances the caret by the currently selected duration. If you prefer to specify a pitch first and then input a note by choosing its duration, you can do this by enabling pitch before duration. Personally, I much prefer to enter notes using the computer keyboard rather than the mouse. I found that almost immediately I became much quicker at inputting notes this way. There's a smaller chance that I would click in the wrong place and there are other benefits such as Dorico automatically adds more bars to the end of the score as you reach it. You can even turn on the Select tool that will disable mouse input and prevent accidental clicks. Now, of course, there's much more to note input in Dorico. And I've recently produced an entire video series about it, and I'll link to that here. So do be sure to check that out to learn more. With the Notations toolbox set to Panels, we can access palettes of music items related to each type of notation. In the Key Signatures panel, we can press these buttons to spin through the different keys. I've decided, actually, I would like this piece to be in G major. And because nothing is selected in the music, when I click the button, my mouse pointer is now carrying the key signature, and I can simply click where I want it to take effect. There are lots of commonly used time signatures to choose from. But you can also create your own using the controls further down the panel. This time, because there is already a selection, when I choose a time signature from the panel, let's go with 6-8, it is immediately input at the point of the selection. So just to recap that, if you have a selection in the score, then whenever you click on something in one of the notes or notation panels, it will be input at that point. If you don't have anything selected, the notation is loaded onto your mouse pointer 
ready for you to click into the score. The tempo panel has several predefined tempos for you to use, with the commonly seen Italian terms associated with them included. However, I'm going to use the controls at the top of the panel to tap out the tempo I would like. Simply tap this big button at regular intervals and Dorico will calculate the tempo. Use the spin box to tweak if necessary and click Create. Now, if you can play the piano and have access to a MIDI keyboard, you can use it to record music directly into Dorico as you play. Connect the MIDI keyboard to your computer's USB port using the manufacturer's instructions and check to see that Dorico is receiving MIDI messages by this green indicator that lights up when you press the keys on the keyboard. You can input notes using the MIDI keyboard in the same way as your computer keyboard, one note at a time, but with the added benefit of always getting the correct octave and being able to input chords by playing them. And you can also input music in real time by playing along with a metronome click. There are a couple of things to set up before you start. It'll save you time in the long run. Let's just take a very quick look at those. Let's open Dorico's Preferences, found in the Edit menu on Windows and the Dorico menu here on Mac, and switch to the Play page. Here are the quantization options, which is what Dorico uses to work out how best to notate rhythms played during real-time recording. I can tell Dorico which note duration is likely to be the shortest that I'll play. If I know I'm not going to be recording anything shorter than a quarter note, then I should select that here. I'm planning to play mostly 16th notes with my right hand, so I'll choose that. I also know I'm not going to be playing any tuplets, at least on purpose, so I'll make sure they're switched off. Don't worry too, too much, as you do have the option to requantize any portion of your recording with new settings at any point later on. Further down the page, I'm going to turn off Detect Slurs because that suits my playing style. And you'll likely find after working with Dorico for a while what the best options are for you. Let's drag a marquee around these practice notes and press delete to remove them. The last thing for now is to add a few more bars using the bars and bar lines panel because when recording, Dorico will stop when it reaches the end of the score. I'll select the piano staff at the point that I would like to start recording. I'm also going to turn off this live tempo control, which will now ignore the tempo map and play at a fixed tempo of my choice, meaning I can record the piano part a little slower without messing up the tempo markings I want in my score. When I press record in the toolbar, Dorico will give me a whole bar count in of metronome clicks before we start recording. When I press stop or reach the end of the final bar, the music I just played is rendered beautifully by Dorico using the settings we chose. It's very easy to make edits and corrections. I can modify the duration of selected notes using either the notes panel buttons, the key commands, or the key editor. There are lots of handy shortcuts. For example, pressing a duration key command twice in quick succession to give a dotted note for that duration. Delete incorrectly input notes with the delete key. And drag any wrong notes to their correct pitch or rhythmic position. Change the voice of selected notes. And use these buttons at the top of the keyboard panel to change the enharmonic spelling of notes. It's also easy to modify the wider structure of your music. Let's move the right hand down an octave. Select the music you want to change by clicking at the start, holding shift, and clicking at the end. In fact, I want to select right to the end of the music, which there is a command for. It can be difficult to remember where all of these useful commands are found, and that's why we added the jump bar. 
simply press the J key and then type what you'd like to do. For example, select to end of flow. You can access pretty much any command with the jump bar and I'm certain it will quickly become one of your favorite Dorico features. With the music now selected, I can drag it to a new pitch. And if I hold down Control on Windows, that's Command on Mac, while I drag, it will move in octaves. Let's create an introduction by repeating these first four bars of music. Turning on Insert Mode before repeating the notes will mean subsequent music is pushed along rather than being overwritten. Press the R key to repeat the selection. Remember then to turn off insert mode. And finally, I can quickly add a repeat to the verse section by selecting it and clicking the start repeat button in the repeat structures panel. So that's how you start inputting music into a new project in Doric OSE. Next time, we'll add a second instrument, maybe a vocal line with some lyrics, and have a look at choosing some different sounds to play back with. If you found this video useful, and I really hope you have, please hit the like button below and do leave a comment. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.